Hi, I'm Jean-François Tanguay. Welcome to Trials and PIs at PCR 2011. For this first discussion, we have David Antonucci that will present the Reclose 2 study. So welcome to this program. Thank you. Could you tell us about the trial you presented? What's the background for that study? Yes, uh, there is not a definite proof that uh, uh, poor responsiveness to clopidogrel is associated with uh, worse outcome in patients with coronary disease. And uh, most studies, uh, concluded studies, uh, focused uh, just uh, in the short-term follow-up, in the periprocedural complications, and most of these studies enrolled mainly patients with stable coronary disease. This is the background. And uh, thus we tested the hypothesis that a uh, residual platelet reactivity after clopidogrel loading would be a strong independent predictor of long-term, long-term ischemic events in patients treated for acute coronary syndromes. Okay. So again, again, a big rationale because this is a clinical question that we have. Should we treat them differently? So what were the results? Well, the result... Uh, uh, are really original because uh, we could reveal that uh, high residual pathogen reactivity after the loading of clopidogrel is a strong predictor of ischemic events and uh, also, most importantly, of cardiac mortality at uh, two year follow up. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, there were uh, differences in baseline characteristics, we also performed. Uh, not only a multivariable analysis, but also propensity score analysis and also a matched comparison, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, nearly 1,000 patients who were really identical with, in terms of baseline characteristics, but high residual pathology reactivity remain a strong predictor of ischemic events, including uh, cardiac death and stent thrombosis. Okay. And what was the percentage of patient population that, that maintained high platelet reactivity? Yes, we uh, treated under mm -hmm. uh, light transmittance aggregometry tests uh, to uh, normalize mm -hmm. the platelet function of these patients, increasing the dose of clopidogrel up to 600 milligram daily okay. or shifting to one gram of ticlopidine. Okay. However, 40% of these patients with high residual platelet reactivity remained with an abnormal ADP test, and uh, the remaining 60% had some effect that was statistically significant, but uh, we never could achieve uh, really a mm. good platelet aggregation inhibition. Okay, so what are the implications then of these findings? The implications, I think, are really important because maybe that uh, this uh, risk factor is a non modifiable risk factor, and it this should be tested by FARTA study using a new second generation tianopyridine. And uh, however, more importantly, shifted in the vulnerable patients with acute coronary syndrome, our interest from the vulnerable plaque that may disrupt, mm -hmm. but not necessarily and generally is not complicated by an occlusive thrombosis, shift our interest uh, from the vulnerable plaque to an aggressive blood. Okay. This is my personal view of this. Okay, side. interesting. And does that mean that platelet function testing should not be done or is not useful or there's no place for research? Well, I, I think that uh, if this uh, will be confirmed really, uh, we, we need the gold standard for this test. We, we, we need the, the true cutoff value uh, however, I think that uh, this is a way to identify patients uh, with uh, a risk that is much more high as compared to other risk factors such as cholesterolemia or uh, other risk factors that are routinely assessed mm -hmm. and uh, more than one time per year. Thus, I think that uh, this uh, na naturally now we are in the uh, field of re clinical research, but. Uh, yeah. I think that we have moved to some uh, clinical practical implication in our daily practice. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Antonucci. This trial, Reclose 2, was on one of the highlights of the PCR 2011, suggesting that if we look at patient population in ACS, there's still up to 14% of the patient population that have high platelet activity after high dose clopidogrel. And even by adjusting the dose of clopidogrel and increasing the dose, we could not uh, improve the outcome. These patients remain 
with high cardiovascular mortality over two, three years follow-up. So again, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. And looking forward for the next study. Thank you very much. Thank you.